Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for the intro. So I'm Tim, one of the co-founders of MailChain, CEO. And MailChain is a Web3 communication layer um, which enables people to, sorry, microphone up, cool. Um, so MailChain enables people to send messages between blockchain addresses, Web3 identities, um, whilst preserving their privacy. And all of the messages are stored off-chain uh, in an encrypted fashion, so nobody except the user has access to any data. So today, I'm going to focus in on the Fevm functionality that we've built in. Um, and I will, OK. Uh, so I'll run you through some of the features and focus in on how uh, Fevm addresses are supported in the protocol, which gives anyone building into Fevm the right uh, mechanism to reach their users um, by Fevm addresses or uh, F410, uh, or to Ethereum addresses and any of the identities that you find in Ethereum ecosystems. So main features of MailChain being the verifiable and private communication. We work in Web3 only. We don't support traditional email. And that's because we can verify that a sender is actually the sender and that the communication remains encrypted end to end. People can register multiple addresses all into one place, and I'll give you a quick example of that later on. Um, and any registered identities all sit in your unified inbox, and the only person who can tell that those identities um, are in there are you. So we can't tell, and nobody snooping around trying to infer where you spend your time and money uh, can figure that out either. And the way we've approached the addressing side of things um, you can basically reach any different user on any of our supported protocols. So, for example, um, you could send from a Fevm address to a Tezos address to a NIR address back to an Ethereum address, and all of that works. Um, and you don't need to switch accounts and protocols. So regardless of what layer you're functioning at with EVMs, for example, you just stay in MailChain. So a quick demo of the inbox to show you the bits that you probably know how to use and then what it's like to register an address. So when you sign up to MailChain, you're creating your own account. That is not a traditional username and password. That is you creating uh, your encryption material that sits in the client side. And when you save your secret recovery phrase, you'll need that later on if you need to recover your account. We can't reset those passwords. But what it means is when you come back to MailChain, you can use a username password. Everything happens in the client side. And then you can decrypt your mailbox. You already know how to use webmail, I assume. So I don't need to spend much time here. But on the bottom left, you can see that you can go to register an address. When you go to register an address, and assuming we're going to be using a Fevm address, um, and you've got that configured in MetaMask under its Ethereum address counterpart, um, you would register an Ethereum address with MetaMask. You'd click through. You'd have a signature request. And on the bottom left of that, there's a messaging key. When you register your address with MailChain, you're creating a messaging key that is then used for the encryption and um, for the messaging side in the protocol. So that means that your spending keys are decoupled from uh, your messaging keys. So that means that when you sign transactions, it's got nothing to do with the encryption, but we have a proof verifying that it's you that came along to uh, register that address. And then that little image on the right, that shows we've got a couple of inboxes. Um, so when you add your first address, you'll have a separate mailbox. All of those messages act in their discrete identity. So once you've registered your address in MailChain, uh, then you can turn on sending from Filecoin. Not everybody wants to send from a Filecoin address, but by default, every registered address will receive messages and accept messages on its F410 counterpart. Um, so if you want to send a message to an Ethereum address that's already on there and you use um, the translated address into Filecoin, um, it will go through. But if you want to send from, um, and on the right image you can see where that F410 address is, um, then you have to go into settings, you enable your Filecoin alias. So this is what it looks like when you turn on the Filecoin addresses. You go to compose a message and you've got a drop down with all of your identities, those match the alias is on the left for the mailboxes. And you can see your Filecoin address is under there. So you've now seen the inbox, which brings together all of your communications for Web3 into one place. But 
under the hood, there's a lot going on. And the inbox is a good way to understand how you can reach your users um, and how you can go to receive the messages. But in terms of sending, uh, we have the MailChain SDK, and I'll show you more about that in a bit. Um, and we also have something called Creator, which allows creators to go on and send um, groups of messages or bulk messages to their communities or people that have transacted with their projects, for example. And then we support quite a few different name services. We bring on more all the time based on what users are asking for. Um, and obviously, that's a lot easier than trying to remember a super long address. So the use cases for why you might want to send messages to addresses. To be clear, we don't see much use for social messaging within um, email in Web3. Um, a lot of users tend to already have their communication channels and communities for that. Um, but what we do see is a massive need for projects to be able to reach their users and audiences. And that is everything from uh, individual communications around governance, um, reasons why people have voted when you've got a delegate, delegatee relationship. Um, you've got creators and collectors, and often collectors want to hear about what their creators are doing. Um, and then uh, you've got the results of uh, various decisions that have been made or campaigns, and often people want to have a little bit of follow-up. So if you're giving grants, it's quite nice to know how that was spent and other little use cases that are coming up. Event-driven notifications is something we've seen more and more of, and that tends to be when there's been an on-chain uh, trigger such as someone has bought an item or stored an item or something needs renewing. Um, and then obviously that bubbles up and then you can call the SDK to send a message to that user or group of users. We've had a lot of people adding profile links. Um, so it's super easy to go on and do mailchain, uh, sorry, app.mailchain.com slash mail to um, all of web3.eth or something like that. Uh, and that is the same as what you're used to seeing with a normal mail to link. So it's very easy to contact people. And then one of the bits that I really enjoy projects using is signing in with magic links, which means that people don't have to sign a piece of data to authenticate with an application in read-only mode. So you can come along, you can have a message sent to your MailChain account, and because you can verify the sender and the recipient through encryption, then you know that that user doesn't have to go blind signing or um, signing little elements uh, that they may not yet trust your application, but if they already trust MailChain, they can use that proof. Um, and you can have the end-to-end -end proof through the chain of uh, proven signatures. So going a little bit more technical, um, we're going to start going down the different layers. And I'll simplify this in a moment. Um, but ultimately, if you think behind the SDK, You've got a protocol, you've got name services and different identities, you've got the addressing, um, you've got the registry, which holds all the names and the encryption keys, um, public keys, obviously. Um, and then there's the transport. So in MailChain, when you send a message, it sits in a transport area until you've retrieved that, and then that will be put in your inbox. We don't obviously want to store messages forever. It makes no space, uh, sense from a space perspective or capacity. Um, and encryption may change over time. So even if you've got encrypted messages today, let's hope they stay encrypted forever. Um, so you move it into your inbox, and that way it is just within the bounds of your account encryption. So simplifying this a little bit, focusing more on what's achievable in Filecoin. Uh, so if you're building a DAP, and um, you have either you're using Fevum storage, and you want to confirm links or any uh, follow-up metadata with users related to how they've interacted with your DAP, then sending that through um, is super easy with MailChain. And you kind of see it because it's an asynchronous relationship. You can just send that message when all of your um, storage and storage operations have completed. So under the hood, you basically have a translation from the F410 address to the EVM address, and it will check that you've got the right ownership and the right proofs available. And when you go to send a message, it will look up the public messaging key of the recipient, encrypt that information, all of it client side or SDK side. Uh, then you'll store that message, and that will remain available for the user to come along and collect. When they sign in, they will be able to retrieve the message by decrypting metadata that's been created off the back of the storage. Um, 
And then once they've decrypted the metadata, they can get the location, go on and retrieve it, download it, decrypt it, and then put it into their mailbox. Here's an example of uh, how easy it is to write code with the SDK. Um, so if you imagine you've got a DAP that is, uh, has added the MailChain SDK, you can basically, in a few lines of code, uh, install the NPM uh, package. Then you configure it with your secret recovery phrase. So this is something that you're running uh, in your own hosted environment, not on the front end. Um, and then once you authenticate with MailChain, you can build up a message. All messages in MailChain are, uh, it's the same standard as HTML and text, plain text emails. So you can use the same type of emails that you'd be generating to send out via regular email. And so we see people putting this in their email pipeline. When it gets to the SMTP part, they choose, is it a MailChain address or is it the rest of the uh, traditional email address? And then they will split those and send out via the right channel. So you can send out any kind of message that way. Um, and that will go through into someone's inbox. So that's all I had to say on that. If you want to find out more, check out the docs. Um, there's an ETH workshop which shows you how to add and develop using the Ethereum addresses, but actually the F410 addresses, they're pretty much interchangeable. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or come and find me whilst I'm here. Love to talk about it and discuss any use cases that you might think about or need. Happy to help. Thank you.